So I made up that word captcha. This is these funny looking squiggles where you have to say what the letters are, uh, the digits. And uh, it took me a while to come up with captcha. I was looking for a gotcha like word. And uh, captcha is wonderful, it's completely automatic, public Turing test to tell it's four T's. Computers, humans apart. C A P T T T C H A. <laughs> and uh, so I was very proud of that. And uh, yeah, the the way that came about was actually very good. It's a good way to do research. I had asked Udi Manber, who was chief scientist at Yahoo at the time, to uh, talk to the faculty at CMU about some problems that came up in Yahoo. You know, we're theoretical computer scientists. We like to hear problems that they have and sometimes we can solve them. And so he mentioned three problems, one of which was the chat room problem. And the chat room problem is uh, Yahoo was being bothered by, well, people in, in chat rooms were being bothered by m bots coming in and talking to the people. And in fact, you know, Lenore immediately afterwards realized this because she went to, she wanted to buy a laptop, a new laptop. She said what she wanted and she went to a chat room to say what she wanted and, and somebody came back and said, I know exactly what you want. And what it was was an advertisement. See, it was just a pointer to a certain advertisement which actually didn't have anything to do with what you wanted. That's the problem. The bots come in and they act as if they know and they disrupt what's going on. So what, yeah, what, what uh, Woody Manber wanted was um, a program, program that uh, would be able to um, test the people that are coming in and be able to weed out the bots. Just let humans into the chat room and keep out the bots. This is a very strange sort of problem. Uh, it's strange in the following sense. Basically what he's asking is for some sort of, he wants a, a computer test. He wanted an algorithm. He wants a computer test that uh, should be able to, uh, an algorithm that should be able to generate tests for testing these different people and it should be able to tell which ones are human and which ones are not uh, because only the humans should be able to pass the test and yet this algorithm itself being a computer should not be able to pass the test it itself can't pass the test that it grades so uh, so the, it's a, the puzzle is can you write a program that will be able to grade somebody on a test that it itself cannot pass. It was really hard. We kept looking and looking. We, uh, for example, we tried um, IQ tests. You know, after all, IQ tests measure your intelligence. We tried, the, the, uh, you can find IQ tests and solutions, and uh, turns out that uh, uh, the computers can pass those IQ tests better than any human can. They're faster and they're perfectly competent. And we tried one thing after another, like those IQ tests, you know, algebra problems, all sorts of problems, very hard. We must have worked on it for a year, trying to come up with something. And then I was on a trip to Berkeley and I spoke to Dick Feitman, who I told the problem to, as I told to others. And he said, I know just what you need. He said, I've been teaching a course on OCR, optical character recognition, and these computers cannot read handwriting or typewriter written stuff. They're just not as good as humans at reading it. So make that your test. And it was a great idea because, in fact, kids, very young kids, can already read stuff that computers cannot read. And I wondered about that. So, so here's the test, and it sort of explains. I mean, you, you base the, what the computer has to do is it takes some legible 
It, it generates some characters, which of course it can read, it prints them, it knows what they are, and then it twists them and to, and to the point where it cannot read them. And that's what it gives out, and the human can read them. So the human is able to read what it, the computer itself, cannot read. The computer can grade it because it knew it, ge it generated the letters in the first place. It knew what letters it had before it twisted it, so it knows what the answer should be. So that took care of that. And But I asked myself, how come kids can do this? How come kids can read stuff that's so hard for a computer to read? And it's really, uh, I realized after a while that very young kids sit at their mother's side and their mother's reading to them from a, a kid's book that's sort of floppy in strange light, who knows? And she's reading and the kid's looking from the side, not even from in front, and is learning how to read that way. So the kid is right is really being given uh, exactly this kind of uh, mangled information and learns to read. And then the kid goes out in the car and they pass signs on the streets and there's a stop sign, the kid will say, ah, that's stop. Even though there's bird dew on the stop sign and there are shadows covering it, but still the kid can read it. And so even very young kids can can pass this test, and uh, computers have a very hard time read, uh, very hard time with it. The other thing I like about this is that there's another angle to this. Uh, people say, you know, at some point, maybe computers will be able to read this, and I tell them, yes, I want them to. I want them to be able to read this. We'll have much better optical character recognition when they can. And so the wonderful thing about these tests is that uh, we give them as challenges to people who are in vision or optical character recognition or whatever. Uh, they are challenges for them to come up with a program that can read the stuff. And uh, so we provide these challenges and then uh, we had a professor at Berkeley uh, send us, I have written a program to pass this, what you, we called easy capture. And, uh, uh, and the, the way we can tell that he did, in fact, write such a program is we generate 5,000 captures, we send them to him, and a minute later he gives us the answers. And we know that no human being could do that. He really did write a program to do this. And so my hope, actually, is that eventually these... Uh, uh, these captures will fail, that eventually computers will be able to pass all captures because then we'll have good optical character recognition.